Top of the morning to you. This is Tacky Tie, and today we are looking at how we could build a moon base today. And basically just kind of seeing what that would even look like. Like, would, do you think we should actually build a moon base? Because um, I know Elon Musk is talking about going to Mars every other week, but we haven't been back to the moon for a hot minute. And so, yeah. Again, the link is down in the description below to the original content creators. Uh, be sure to go over to their channel and give them a like and subscribe. Give them the love and support that they well deserve. And yeah, let's jump into it. Humans dream about leaving Earth and traveling through the galaxy. But we were born too early to be part of it. Or were we? The reality is we could begin our dream by building a moon base today. We actually do have the technology, and current estimates from NASA and the private sector say it could be done for 20 to 40 billion dollars spread out over about a decade. So not that much, at least compared to what we spend all the time. I mean, geez, just like last week they dropped another three, three billion or trillion or whatever. I mean, after a certain point, these numbers just get so big that like, yeah. The price is comparable to the International Space Station or the budget surplus of Germany in 2017. Not that big an investment really. The payoff would be immeasurable. The moon is a sandbox to develop new technologies and exploit hmm. unlimited resources. It would start a new space race and lay the foundation for us to spread out into the solar system and beyond. I mean, it definitely would be a good, like, anchor point and just, like, home base to be a springboard to the rest of our solar system. Um, I think it would be it would be a lot more, it'd be a lot better to use that as a springboard than Mars, because uh, really Mars is one, it's, it's just a lot further. Um, but yeah. It would create a vast array of new technologies to benefit us on Earth. Who would own and it? We would all be part of it. So, why aren't we doing it? Well, sadly, it's hard to get governments interested in long term investments in the future of humanity. Let's imagine just. Yeah, and that's one of also the problems, too, is it's difficult with short term reigns to develop long term investments. Because um, every president, at least in the U.S., wants to be wants to be known for it and have that influence their voters and their populace. Uh, but it's hard to build something today that will not see the effects for the next 10, 20 years, and that'll be long after their reign. So, Just doing it. If we start today, how would we build a moon base? But private equity, private sector, uh, that's a completely different set of rules. And, I mean, it's all for profit. Say, like, if SpaceX or Blue Origin did it, um, I mean, I, I, I'd imagine it'd be mainly for mining first uh, to at least develop and gather the resources needed to build further projects on the moon. Throughout history, colonization happened in phases. In the first phase of the Age of Exploration of the New World, for example, European monarchs funded expeditions to chart and discover and to stake their claims. They planted a flag and set up a camp, but they didn't stay. Yeah, and like planting a flag gives you the right to anything, even though historically that is basically how all new land was acquired. Uh, even though that's just absurd, but... In the second phase, small missions set up outposts and settlements were founded, which were still very dependent on their home countries for supplies. Some failed, but others survived and established a permanent presence. Jamestown. Only then, in the third phase, Barely. did a true colony form to which tradesmen and laborers could emigrate... And I was very thankful to the, the natives, otherwise Jamestown 
just would have starved. Creating new wealth and opportunities for themselves and their families, sending extreme wealth back to their countries of origin. When we colonize the moon, we'll go through the same three phases. Maybe the Martians will help us when we get to Mars. Or whatever's on the dark side of the moon, whoever they are can help us. <laughs> This time, without murdering billions of innocent people in the process. Yeah, good. The moon is not a welcoming place for living things. A moon day lasts 29 Earth days, with a difference of nearly 300 degrees Celsius between sunlight and shade. Wow, There's that's... no atmosphere to shield us from meteorites, big and small, or cosmic radiation. Worse still, the lunar surface is covered in a layer of nasty, jagged dust. The moon is hard. But we're good at doing hard things. In the first phase of lunar colonization, our explorers proved it can be done, that a new world can be reached. This phase started 60 years ago with the Apollo missions. Since then, satellites like the American Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have mapped the moon, while rovers like the Chinese U-2 have studied the... So they have mapped the moon, but yet they won't show us the, the dark side of the moon. Composition of the lunar surface, Maybe looking for water, ice, and metals. Phase one is more or less complete. We know what we need to know to enter phase two. In the second phase, astronauts will build the first moon base, and this could begin today. The first small moon base could be completed in a decade. The first nation that establishes this base will be akin to the first nations building outposts in the New World 500 years ago. See, we should have already started that. Because, I mean, I, like the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. It's expensive to send rockets to the moon, so we will send as little as possible. It's getting cheaper, though. The base will be light, little more than inflatable habitats for crews of no more than 12, and will be deployed somewhere with... And the Chinese are actually working on building their own space program and starting to build... and at least a public desire to build a base on the moon. Natural shelter. Or at least visit Options the moon. include caves, like underground lava tube tunnels, or craters near the poles, where the days are six months long. These oh. astronauts will not stay long. The habitat is likely to be abandoned between missions, as solar panels cannot generate electricity during the lunar night. But they'll do the groundwork to enable humans to stay permanently. Our first crew will consist of scientists and engineers who will study the composition of the moon and whose experiments will explore ways of using the available lunar material, say, purifying lunar ice and turning it into water for human use. And water is important for far more than drinking. The yeah, it's like the most crucial asset and almost impossible to transport just because it's so heavy. Water is so heavy. They can use it to experiment with growing plants for food. Hydrogen fuel cells will store power through the long night, extending astronaut stays. And most importantly, it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, rocket fuel. By harvesting water from the moon and putting it into orbit, the moon base will supply an orbital depot where scientific missions to Mars and the outer solar system can refuel. Compared to the Earth, it's much easier and cheaper to get things off the moon into orbit. Colonizing Mars. Yeah, that would be a lot more, well, yeah, like I said, efficient. Uh, just because, like, once you already have things, like, in orbit and, like, and have, like, a place to build, then you can just, it's so much, you can just build things so much more rapidly. Especially, like, building, like, 3D printers, uh, using the materials already found and sourced on the lunar surface etc. Asteroids. May mean starting from the moon. But this isn't a true colony. Not yet. The base will be abandoned if funding stops. If we want our base to grow into the third phase, into a true colony, it must become self-sufficient, supporting itself via exports to Earth. Yeah. Now, private contractors arrive, looking to get rich off lunar resources and support services. If it's cheaper to produce rocket fuel in space, what else can they get rich on? They could extract precious metals, abundant in impact craters, and other raw materials from the lunar regolith. 
One promising possibility is the mining of helium-3, an isotope that could one day be used in nuclear fusion reactors, hmm. something the Chinese lunar exploration program is currently looking into. Yeah. Future colonists may export helium-3 back to Earth, providing us with cheap and clean fusion energy. Astro fusion. Droids could be pulled into the moon's orbit and mined. With commercial exports to Earth, the colony is fully in its third phase, self-sufficient and economically productive. Our base will begin using lunar material in its construction projects if it's to continue growing. Fortunately, lunar soil has all the necessary ingredients to make concrete. Robotic mining rigs can sift the lunar dust for organic molecules and could be used to build huge structures way too massive to be brought from Earth while advances in 3D printing will make it possible to produce almost everything else the crews need. Yeah, that, that's really kind of the first steps, is just getting the materials to build more stuff already up there. Uh, I mean, they, they just, I think I saw something where they, they, ma they made a, a 3D pizza printer in the International Space Station, just kind of as like a, a gag or food, I mean. It's hard to say when exactly the colony becomes self-sustaining. Growth is gradual, experiments are replaced by industry, and the population steadily reaches the hundreds, encompassing more than just scientists. Engineers, pilots, and contractors representing countries and corporations will be present. Two of these people will make a breakthrough. Not scientific, but social. They will have the first extraterrestrial child. Throughout history, the birth of the first child was celebrated as a moment where the seed of a colony finally and... Yeah, and what nation would that be part of? Like, would that, like, what country would that represent? It would be a, a full new colony country, really. ...irreversibly took root. Here, it means that the moon is not just a place for scientists and engineers to work, it's a place for people to live, to raise a family. Once this transition happens, the colony grows rapidly, building more habitats and schools and farms and all the things needed to support the growing population. As our colony grows, all kinds of new technologies will be invented to sustain it. They might develop crops that efficiently recycle carbon dioxide or that grow with very little water. Yeah, that's really what we need to, is just to, to start building a separate colony outside of our little blue marble they might find ways to recycle and reuse 100 percent of their waste technologies that are extremely valuable for earth otherwise the only they people could even build the first space elevator in the solar intelligence system. left with a space robots, elevator spacecraft AI. astronauts and raw materials could be brought back and forth from lunar orbit without needing to use rockets at all the moon may become a hub for economic activity on a scale that's hard to imagine right now it's hard to say who will own the colony at this point, the national identity of their parents, or will a new generation melt together into a new lunar society? And when existing treaties that bar any nation from owning the moon are inevitably rewritten, will the colonists be given a say? Will they declare independence from the Earth? However it happens, the moon... That would be interesting. If all of these different nations come together and build a colony on the moon, like if they declare independence from Earth itself. I mean, a, a mat, like, eventually that would happen. Same thing with any other colony. And yeah, I mean, they would be their own people, develop their own dialects and languages. And really the, the, the least connected they are with constant new people going back and forth, that disparity would grow over time, especially like Martians, uh, people that were born on Mars, uh, just because that, that lead time to transport is so long. Yeah. It is a perfect sandbox to learn how to colonize the solar system, the perfect project to unify nations, and the only way to guarantee our survival as a species should something tragic happen on Earth. If we ever want to colonize the Milky Way, we'll have to start somewhere. So why not start there? Why not start now? Yeah, let's start it now.
I mean, that is really kind of the next steps to to our species. I mean, we've we've discovered every inch of the Earth, basically, except if you look at the oceans. Uh, but I mean, there's so many people in just that our population grows so exponentially, uh, really, we're running out of space. We, we got to go somewhere. Uh, we've already started building up basically to our limits, um, unless we start building like underwater cities or like sky cities or something. But I mean, if we're already going to go, go to the sky, might as well just go to the moon. Uh, but yeah, make sure to go down in the description, look at the link in the description down below. Uh, give Kurdzidik the love and support that they well deserve. They're awesome content creators. Um, I've loved them for many years. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.